Thank you all. Please be seated. Thank you. Thank you. Please be seated. Thanks very much for the warm welcome. I appreciate you treating a neighbor from Texas so kindly. <laughs> I'm really proud to be here with the men and women of the Sandia National Laboratory. We just had a fascinating tour of the facility. It's a, it was a little quick, but I learned a lot, and I want to thank Tom Hunter for his uh, hospitality and his enthusiasm uh, for the projects that go on here and his praise uh, for the people who work here. I, I thank you for coming, and it's such an honor to be here. I. Uh, I know full well that the work you do here keeps our military strong, it keeps our nation competitive, and our country's really grateful for your dedication and for the fact that you lend your expertise into helping Americas. I, uh, it is such an honor to be in New Mexico, the home state of uh, Pete Domenici, as well as Jeff Bingham, to sign this bill. This, uh, this bill will strengthen our economy and it will improve our environment and it's going to make this country more secure. The Energy Policy Act of 2005 is going to help every American who drives to work, every family that pays a power bill, and every small business owner hoping to expand. The bill is the result of years of effort. It is a result of good folks coming together people who've made a commitment to deliver results for the American people. This bill launches an energy strategy for the 21st century, and I've really been looking forward to signing it. I appreciate Pete Domenici's leadership on this bill. You know, he's the kind of fellow when he makes up his mind to do something, it's hard to stop him. <laughs> and uh, as Pete said, he's worked on a lot of energy bills in the past. Some of them were signed by presidents, and some of them never made it to the desk. But he's been dogged in his determination to get a bill done, and he found a really fine partner in, uh, in Joe Barton. Joe Barton did an outstanding job as the chairman of the House Energy and Commerce Committee, and he did a really good job as the conference chairman. This bill is here in New Mexico because of the fine work of Joe Barton and Pete Domenici.
coal and nuclear power and oil and natural gas. By using these reliable sources to supply more of our own energy, we'll reduce our reliance on energy from foreign countries. And that'll help this economy grow so people can work. Coal is America's most abundant energy resource. It accounts for more than one half of our electricity production. The challenge is to develop ways to take advantage of our coal resources while keeping our air clean. When I ran for president in 2000, I promised to invest, or asked the Congress to invest, $2 billion over 10 years to promote clean coal technology. So far, working with the United States Congress, we've provided more than $1.3 billion for research in the innovative ways to improve today's coal plants and to help us build even cleaner coal plants in the future. And the bill I signed today authorizes new funding for clean coal technology so we can move closer to our goal of building the world's first zero emission coal-fired power plant. Nuclear power is another of America's most important sources of electricity. Of all our nation's energy sources, only nuclear power plants can generate massive amounts of electricity without emitting an ounce of air pollution or greenhouse gases. Thanks to the advances in science and technology, nuclear plants are far safer than ever before. Yet America has not ordered a nuclear plant since the 1970s. Coordinate the ordering of new plants. The bill I signed today continues the Nuclear Power 2010 partnership between government and industry. It also offers a new form of federal risk insurance for the first six builders of new nuclear power plants. With the practical steps in this bill, America is moving closer to a vital national goal. We will start building nuclear power plants again by the end of this decade. Meeting the needs of our growing economy also means expanding our domestic production of oil and natural gas, which are vital fuels for transportation, electricity, and manufacturing. The Energy Bill makes practical reforms to the oil and gas permitting process to encourage new exploration in environmentally sensitive ways. The bill authorizes research into the prospects of unlock unlocking vast amounts of now energy now trapped in shale and tar sands. It provides incentives for oil refineries to expand their capacity. And that's consumer friendly. The more supply, the more reliable your gasoline will be and the more pre less pressure on price. The bill includes tax incentives to encourage new construction of natural gas pipelines. It clarifies federal authority to site new receiving terminals for liquefied natural gas so that consumers across this nation can benefit from more affordable, clean-burning natural gas. Thirdly, the bill I signed today will help diversify our energy supply by promoting alternative and renewable energy sources. The bill extends tax credits for wind, biomass, landfill gas, and other renewable electricity sources. The bill off offers new incentives to promote clean, renew renewable geothermal energy. It creates a new tax credit for residential solar power systems. And by developing these innovative technologies, we can keep the lights running while protecting the environment and using energy produced right here at home. When you hear us talk about less dependence on foreign sources of energy, one of the ways to become less dependent is to enhance the use of renewable sources of energy. The bill also will lead to a greater diversity of fuels for cars and trucks. The bill includes tax incentives for producers of ethanol and biodiesel. The bill includes a flexible, cost-effective renewable fuel standard that will double the amount of ethanol and biodiesel in our fuel supply over the next seven years. Using ethanol and biodiesel will leave our air cleaner, and every time we use a homegrown fuel, 
particularly these, will be going helping our farmers, and at the same time, be less dependent on foreign sources of energy. I used to like to kid, but I really wasn't kidding when I said, someday a president is going to pick up the crop report, and they're going to say we're growing a lot of corn. And the, or, or, or soybeans, and the first thing that's going to pop in the president's mind is we're less dependent on foreign sources of energy. It makes sense to promote ethanol and biodiesel. <laughs> the bill I signed today also includes strong support for hydrogen fuel technology. When hydrogen is used in a fuel cell, it can power consumer products from computers to cell phones to cars that emit pure water instead of exhaust fumes. I laid out a hydrogen fuel initiative, and I want to thank the members of Congress for adding to the momentum of this initiative through this energy bill. The goal, the goal of the research and development for hydrogen-powered automobiles is to make it possible for today's children to take their driver's test in a pollution-free car. Fourth, the energy bill will help ensure that consumers receive electricity over dependable modern infrastructure. The bill removes outdated obstacles to investment in electricity transmission lines and generating facilities. The bill corrects the provision of the law that made electric reliability standards optional instead of mandatory. Most of you probably consider it mandatory that the lights come on when you flip a switch. <laughs> now the utility companies will have to consider it mandatory as well. <laughs> to keep local disputes from causing national problems, the bill gives federal officials the authority to select sites for new power lines. We have a modern interstate grid for our phone line and our highways. With this bill, America can start building a modern 21st century electricity grid as well. The bill I signed today the bill I signed today is a critical first step. It's a first step toward a more affordable and reliable energy future for the American citizens. This bill is not going to solve our energy challenges overnight. Most of the serious problems, such as high gasoline costs or Rising dependence on foreign oil have developed over decades. It's going to take years of focused effort to alleviate those problems. But in about two minutes, we're going to have a strategy that will help us do that. And as we work to solve our energy dependence, dependency, we got to remember that the market for energy is global. And America is not the only large consumer of hydrocarbons. As the economies of nations like India and China grow rapidly, their demand for energy is growing rapidly as well. It's in our interest to help these expanding energy users become more efficient, less dependent on hydrocarbons. You see, by helping them achieve these goals, it'll take pressure off the global supply, and it'll help take pressure off price for American consumers. And so last month, I joined with the leaders of India and China and Australia and Japan and South Korea to create a new Asia-Pacific partnership on clean development. This is an innovative program which is authorized by this energy bill. And through it, our goal is to spread the use of clean, efficient energy technologies throughout the Pacific Rim. After years of debate and division, Congress passed a good bill. It's my honor to have come to the great state of New Mexico to sign it. I'm confident that one day, Americans will look back on this bill as a vital step toward a more secure and more prosperous nation that is less dependent on foreign sources of energy. Thank you for coming. <laughs>